the papers presented and uh, the influence on my work that Pat Soupies has had tremendous influence on all of us. Incredible breadth of his interests has to be cited. Uh, not only the death, but the death, the tremendous variety of papers here, right even, the, the, even this morning, and I've read his certain books elsewhere on the program, uh, all relate to past work in some way, which shows how, what uh, uh, consequences it has had for all of us. Uh, empirical relevance, theoretical relevance, understanding, all of us that have happened. Pat, I want to thank you for all that I've learned from you in a long period of time, maybe longer than anybody else here. Um, I have some really rather disjointed remarks to make. This is not a paper in the sense of results. It may even be, you might not be totally surprised, a paper uh, or, or, or remarks really, not even a paper, on, uh, which has paradoxical uh, questions uh, uh, raised. I don't have kind of a definite answer. I don't have a, uh, a contradiction. But I, just, uh, but I want to say the nature of economic intercourse, economics is a system, the relationships among many people and among, of course, physical objects and, uh, impalpable, and impalpable objects like services of some kind. Uh, the ordinary way we present economic, the way I've done it in many, many, many of my works, is kind of a trade in goods or goods and services, to be true, correct, but that is that is by itself isn't fundamental. Um, we, we have, it's a way of, by which people who produce grains uh, exchange their grains for, uh, in some way, wind up with food, with, uh, with housing and food and uh, maybe, the, maybe the things they need in order to produce the grain and so forth and so on. And that's why we always present it in a general equilibrium, work out the ideas to supply to what's offered as to equal what's, uh, what's, what's being uh, demanded, and uh, the regular, and somehow the idea of a price as a way of regulating this thing. That we balance it by saying, well, you can sell things and get something for them, and then take that money. Instead of bartering, we, take them, we sell things and then take the money and buy something else, and this is a much more efficient way of getting goods around. As elaborate um, developments from uh, Hume's good friend uh, and executor, uh, Adam Smith, uh, uh, on, uh, as to how this uh, transactions take place, and some arguments as to why this is a particularly efficient way of, this, of, uh, of arranging these goods and services, the goods and services. But even from the beginning, and even at, at Smith's time, it wasn't quite, there was a little bit of a problem in this. And that's the big problem, but one of them is, there are a number, but one of them is the, where future, that there's a future, which you transact today, uh, is only part of your life. People live, and of course many even have interests beyond their own lifetime in terms of bequests. But let's say it's enough, that, enough for our purposes that they live some period of time worry about a future. Um, we have savings and investments. Some people say, well, I'm not going to spend all I have today. I'm not going to spend goods. So I'll try to uh, put it into something, which, give it to somebody else who's going to take care of it, who's going to use it for some purpose, and, uh, uh, and uh, it would then return, return it to me later when I need it. Let's say we have a retirement cycle. You retire be before you die, and therefore need some support uh, during your period, or whatever you whatever you are. Uh, but on the other hand, people can use, and that may be the more crucial thing, can use goods because they last and produce things in the future. I mean, you can buy a piece, of land, a piece of land lasts forever. So I can buy a piece of land and uh, use it or rent it out. But I can put up a building which will house my, um, a factory which will house my production. I can buy machines and so forth. Things which land, which the purpose of Putting these things up is to secure some return, which is going to be in the future. So we really have the problem that if I lend money, to, if I lend money to somebody, I buy common, I buy common stocks or lend money in some way. I have the, you know, that begins to get wrapped up into your uh, 
considerations. There's been a big argument for the price system, uh, kind of a, a libertarian in a way, but maybe we can think of it as information based, and we're going to move toward the topic. Uh, namely, that uh, I know what I want, and for example, if I'm a producer, I know how to produce. So I have knowledge of how to plant or produce the weed cotton or whatever activity you want to do things. And I have this private question. You don't, really, if you're dealing with me, you don't, and I, you're buying cloth from me, you don't have to know how I made the cloth at all. So in other words, we can have a, a distribution of information, uh, and that's what that separates us. But you see now, if I lend to somebody else, it isn't really my information that's at stake, it's somebody else's information. We begin to see some difficulties. Um, it's also true, of course, that uh, and, uh, a basic, uh, something I'm not going to dwell on, but I should mention here, a basic issue about information is that, that even this narrow view of productive information, uh, how to produce things, changes over time. In fact, the usual economic interpretation is that most of the vast increase in our consumption People flew, a lot of these people flew here. Uh, uh, technologies that didn't even exist uh, so, so long ago, and uh, uh, so forth. Uh, these have changed over time. And that, in some sense, which I'm not going to go into, the, uh, with most of our growth, and our growth in a per capita sense, uh, how would you add? I want you to add I'm not really population numbers. It has changed over, over time. Uh, is changing over time, and this is partly the result of decisions. Now you see that all of this creates the idea that you really have to know something about the others. Information you would ordinarily think of as private is not really, you're going to depend on other people's private knowledge, private information. Now, a lot of this was very sharply put forward historically in what's known in the economic literature as the socialist controversy. Uh, socialism, of course, was a big political movement, especially before the World War I. And uh, after, World, after World War I and all its attendant problems, there were moves in countries like Austria, Germany, uh, well, uh, leaving, uh, leaving aside Russia, which is uh, uh, something else. The, uh, there were a lot of intellectuals and uh, a popular feeling for moving to the social state, socialist parties would have 30, 40, 50 percent of the legislature, and so forth. Um, Ludwig von Mises, an Austrian economist, argued socialism is impossible. Without prices, you wouldn't know what to do. And this started a whole discussion. And one of the replies, uh, Joseph Schumpeter, in fact, was one of the, although another Austrian economist, actually, and not, not by any means a uh, uh, socialist, really, Nevertheless, said, uh, well, really, no. The socialists could create a price system. And this led to a whole discussion. So that it, uh, Friedrich von Hayek, of course, one of the great contributors to this, Oscar Lange, uh, Babbler, the uh, um, names that don't, some of them won't be even to you. But uh, it became the, it really brought forward an idea which is already implicit, that prices are not really facts, things I have to pay, but also were sources of information. They told me how difficult it was to produce something. <coughs> the thing was expensive. It meant it was kind of, you have to use a lot of resources to prove it, and this means you're drawing those resources from somewhere else. So a high price, you really want a high price as a way of choking down demand for this. Uh, didn't discuss the relevance of the price of gasoline, which is so much discussed today. Um, the, uh, uh, so the, it became a big emphasis on the idea of information. By the time I was a graduate student, this was sort of already standard. And uh, I didn't realize, it, but I reviewed the literature a little bit, but really, although it's implicit, it, never, it really became very explicit with this, with this uh, socialist controversy in the 20s and 30s. And it made the idea that prices are not are really, uh, that the, the whole economic system becomes to some extent an exchange of information. I'm not, I'm taught that things are hard for me to get. I should, I should that, 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 of course, you apply a real stick. I've got to pay them. But in the so this view of socialism, the prices weren't were really just bookkeeping entries. By the way, the same problem occurs within a large firm, which is using its own 
product one department as an input in the product another department. 